Hello, everybody, and welcome to Educations. I'm your host, Phil Strunk, joined today by somebody from the same town I live in, Scott Lewis. Scott, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers? Hello, Educations, <laughs> and, you know, hashtag wall ed chat and 122 uh, ed chat world. Um, yeah, I'm Scott Lewis, and I live in Winchester, Virginia, probably, you know, less than two miles away from uh, Phil. Um, and I am an instructional technology coach for Frederick County Public Schools. Yeah, and you know, Scott, I'm really excited to to have you on here. And uh, you know, at the beginning, whenever I talked about some things that uh, that we hopefully be able to get to during the show, uh, the thing that I was going to talk about last, I guess we might as well talk about first since we both just brought it up. We live two minutes away from each other. You know, we we've gone out to to dinner once or twice, and uh, that never would have happened without Twitter, which I think is is pretty cool, right? You know, it, like how. It's really neat how those connections emerge, you know. It it really does, you know. It's um, it, you know, if somebody had told me about the magic of Twitter years ago, uh, and I'm sure people did, um, yeah, I, I probably would have scoffed at it because it's one of those social media things that you know, when you first get involved with it, and you're like, eh, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've got to tell you, yeah. It, it came about as a time where, you know, I needed that spark in, you know, my, my professional career. Um, you know, it seemed like, you know, I was getting stale as, um, an educator and as a professional and, you know, it just provided a way for me to be able to, you know, see new things and, you know, meet new people. So, you know, for me that, that's been the power of Twitter, that ability to open doors and open windows to classrooms and get to meet people. Yeah. And, you know, at, at the time you were MHS Lewis history. Yes. Um, so long before you became the, the instructional tech coach that we know now, you're a history teacher. What was your inspiration for going into that position? It, you know, I've always been a learner at heart. And, you know, it's something that, you know, I've had a, I guess has really shaped my career is being able to, you know, morph into something else or change my practice or learn mm -hmm. something new. And, you know, it just seemed like the natural fit for me. You know, it gave me an opportunity to, you know, broaden, uh, I guess, you know, who I was reaching. And instead of just uh, reaching students, you know, it, it began to, you know, morph into me reaching teachers and mm -hmm. dealing with teachers more and more. Yeah, and and one of the things that always stands out to me whenever I uh, whenever I would look at your Twitter feed then and whenever we first started connecting was the way that you would build relationships with students from all different backgrounds and and that had all different systems of support. What were you doing in your classrooms that kids could be like, wow, Mr. Lewis, he's a cool teacher. I wanna I wanna know him. I think for me, it's just being me, um, and, and never losing sight of that. You know, right. being able to. Yeah, you know, let my hair down, so to speak. <laughs> I really have. Me too. <laughs> but you know, being willing to to joke with them and let them know that you know I'm a real person and that I have you know needs and desires and you know strengths, weaknesses, and failings mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and and as they discover those things, it's. Kids don't want to learn from robots. You know, there was a there's an instructional assistant at my school who, whenever we went one to one, was concerned, saying, you know, the next thing that's going to happen is they're going to start to to phase us out and exchange for all this technology. And I just continue to think, I just I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, and and I agree with you. I, I think that's been uh, that's been the the warning or the fear for years and years is that we become more dependent on technology that you know teachers will disappear. And I think. Um, yeah, it, and in some, some ways they are correct. I mean, teachers that don't, I guess, metamorphosize or change mm -hmm. in the way that they reach students do disappear. Um, you know, it, it goes back to, you know, our students today are different, right? And, you know, and, and they will always be different and they will always change. Mm -hmm. And for educators, you know, we need to find ways to reach those students. And Ooh, exactly. Yeah, I kind of think my role as an instructional technology coach is to really, you know, help those teachers figure out how they can reach their students. Yeah. So, so what what did it take for you, Scott, to to make the decision 
saying because they're two very different roles and, and the type of impact that you get to leave is, is vastly different compared to a traditional classroom teacher to an instructional technology coach. What was going through your mind and, and what led you to, to finally make that decision of this is where I think I can do the most good for the future? You know, it's funny. It's um, it's not really something that I recognized in myself at first. You know, this is probably a couple of years in the making. Um, it was actually uh, the instructional technology coach at my school that really took me under her wing and, you know, guided me along in the process. You know, I think she saw in me, you know, that that spark and that willingness to mm -hmm you know, embark on this journey and, you know, good, bad, or, in, or indifferent, you know, she really <laughs> mentored me the last couple of years. So, yeah, you know, she saw that. Yeah. And it's always great whenever, you know, like we like whenever we see something in our students, but it's also nice whenever people see stuff in us as well, I think. Um, now that now that you've taken on this role, what are some things that you're seeing in your school compared to compared to in your previous position? Because you didn't change schools, you just changed roles. It, yeah, so um, it, at Millbrook, we have a huge culture change right now because you know not only do I have a new role, but we have a new principal. Um, so, and that's that's really taken us on a journey because you know we're looking at you know how we do business as educators and how we relate to students and how we relate to each other and how we grow our practice um so we're doing a whole lot of talking and exploring you know with each other so for me as a brand new instructional technology coach that's really helped me because you know i'm able to be a part of those conversations from mm -hmm. you know the ground up and really you know get in the weeds with this right right and and part of that culture you know, whenever there's any sort of change, it always makes people a little cautious. Um, what are some things that you've done to to kind of put your colleagues at ease as well? You know, as a coach, you're going into other people's rooms. And um, I know sometimes people get the perception of, oh, if there's somebody in my room, I oh, yeah. must be doing something wrong. How do you put that at ease? Uh, well, the, the most interesting thing is, and I guess the, the easiest, most difficult thing to do is to listen. Right. Um, you know, because as educators, we're kind of you know, leery of that silence. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and as, you know, as a former history teacher, you know, I, I tend to, you know, want to talk with people and, you know, want to listen to their stories right. and, you know, get involved with them. I think that's, you know, the first most important thing to do is realize that, you know, no matter who you are, you know, teachers are teachers and teachers are humans. And, um, you know, for me to go into a classroom, I have to figure out where they are. Right. And I have to figure out how I meet them where they are. And, you know, before we can move forward. So, you know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to be able to do that. But, you know, I think it's one of the most gratifying parts of the job. And it looks like you're having a lot of success with it too. So what have been some, what have been some really big success stories this year from your first year as an instructional technology coach? Uh, well, I've got to say that, you know, my first success, um, I was actually pushed into it. Um, you know, one of our assistant principals that I've been working with, um, you know, suggested that I spend time working with, um, you know, our special ed population. Hmm. And, you know, for me, this is a change being, you know, a regular ed teacher for years and, you know, an administrator. Um, it wasn't a population that I've worked a lot with. And, you know, I've had co-taught classes and special ed classes, and I was a special ed administrator. But this is a class that's dealing with um, severe cognitive and physical impairments. And, you know, one thing that's really done for me as an educator is to figure, is to really, you know, get into, you know, my philosophy and, you know, dig deep into, you know, does every student learn and can every student learn? And right. that really instilled in me and, and kind of reinforced that idea that, yeah, every student <laughs> can learn if given the opportunity, given, you know, a really good, high quality teacher. And, you know, so we've spent a lot of time in this class, um, you know, working with Seesaw, which is an online portfolio, mm -hmm. um, coding and robotics. Wow. And yeah, it's been phenomenal. That's and, awesome. You know, it's 
I, I love to be able to walk down the hallways and get high fives and hugs from, you know, students in this class. And, you know, it makes me want to go into the, that class more and more because, you know, they're, you know, just the, the joy in their, they um, want to learn. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So it, I, I would say that is definitely, you know, the highlight of my year. And awesome. yeah, I've got to get a, give a shout out to Allison Tipsword because, you know, she's the, the teacher I've been working a lot with and just, you know, her growth as a professional and, you know, her teachers you know, or her students have been wonderful this year. That's good. Have there been any big like surprises, anything that you, you came into this year and you thought, wow, like, whenever I took on this position, I wasn't expecting blank. Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> I was actually expecting more resistance to the role. Yeah. Um, because this this actually is you know a big change for the district. This is only the second year that we've had instructional technology coaches, and before they were in, instructional technology resource teachers. So they're the resource teachers that sat in a, a room, and people came to them if they had software questions. <laughs> um, so you know the coaching model is different. And, they're a lot more active. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's the way to think of it then. Yeah, it, it really is. It's more, you know, it's instructional leadership. And that's, okay. you know, something that I'm passionate about and that I love. Um, so, you know, I, I expected more, you know, pushback from that. But, you know, so far, you know, majority of teachers, you know, every time I've, you know, asked if I could come into their classroom, and I always make sure that, you know, I ask beforehand. So it's not hmm. like, yeah, I'm coming in to interrupt the the flow or whatever. <laughs> um, but you know, at the beginning, they'd always respond with, "Well, yeah, we're not doing much technology today." So, well, the, well that's not the reason I'm coming in. You, know, you don't <laughs> put on a dog and pony show and you know break out the um, you know the huge disco ball of technology right, right. down the hallway. So, what are what are some like very simple? If, if somebody is interested in getting involved in the in the ed tech world and bringing that into their classroom, and you know, you're in the high school right now, so so let's think about like a secondary education perspective. What are some uh, what are some tips that you'd have for for that teacher as they're getting ready to integrate more technology into their room? I think the biggest tip that I can give, um, and one that comes into every conversation I have with teachers, is you know, technology should not be the lesson. It should be an enhancement to the lesson. Amen. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, you know, mostly because you know, if we get wrapped around you know the idea that we have to incorporate all these glitzy, you know, glamorous things, we lose sight of what we actually want to accomplish. Um, so, you know, some of the best lessons I've seen have incorporated no technology whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, that conversation go, you know, always goes, well, you know, how can we transform this? And, you know, are there changes that we can make to this, you know, to make it better to reach more students? Um, and, it, and if the answer is honestly, no, this is a really good, solid lesson for my students right now, then, hey, you know, that that's a victory. Right. It's a huge, it's a huge win in that case. Yeah. That we can find that too, you know? Um, yeah. I, I think that's, I think that's good advice for, for anybody. There's, there's a lot of people on Twitter that would, that would definitely say that you are on the right track or, or that any teacher that, that is looking to integrate tech into their room, they're on the right track to make sure that it is not the, you know, today I'm going to teach Seesaw. No, no. Today when you use Seesaw to teach these skills or yep. you know, apply this content to it, I, I think that's really important. And Scott, something I love that you do as the ITC at, uh, at Millbrook high school here in, here in Winchester, Virginia is a, uh, Anytime you're in somebody's room and you see something awesome, you tweet it out and you share it out. Uh, you've been active on on Twitter, and um, you know we we have a featured chat of the show. And FCPS Learn is, is that featured chat today. I want to take a couple minutes to talk about your your reasoning. What is this? What's it stand for? Why'd you make it? And and what has it grown into? Um, well, I, I guess to start with one of the questions, why did I make that? Um, <laughs> I was doing a professional development session for the district about growing a professional learning network. And, you know, for me, you know, I guess the that shining moment is when I, you know, saw all these people posting, you know, these hashtags with A1, A2, and, you know, I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. So, you know, I, 
went down the rabbit's hole, followed it through and came back to hashtag one, two, two Ed chat. And, you know, that was the beginning for me. And I realized that, you know, this is an opportunity for me as an educator to be able to, to share, um, you know, nuggets of information and to learn from other people. So, you know, it started as how do you grow um, a professional learning network? And, you know, I decided based upon that, you know, hey, you know, let me start this um, this hashtag and see where it goes from there. And, you know, it hasn't grown by leaps and bounds, but um, I've been satisfied because, you know, my criteria for the last year has been I want to be able to share something that I'm passionate about and I want to learn something each week. Mm -hmm. And so for me, if I can learn something, that, that's gold. It's a big win, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, if somebody wants to join FCPS Learn, what's the what's the time and date for or time it and date? For that? Every Tuesday night at eight thirty p.m. Eastern Time. Um, it's always you know the same bat time, same bat channel. Um, <laughs> you know, but you know we welcome all, and I try and get out questions. Um, you know, mostly on Mondays. Uh, sometimes, if you know I'm feeling bored on a weekend, I'll get it out on a Sunday. Um, but, you know, again, it, it allows me the opportunity to be able to explore things. And this, you know, we've done things. I think our most recent one was on uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, um, yeah. mostly because, um, you know, selfishly, I want to explore that stuff more and I want to start, you know, pushing stuff out into classrooms. So for me to be able to do that, I need to find out more information about it. And I think, you know, one of the the best parts about Twitter is that you're always going to find somebody that has knowledge about something and right. if you want to learn it. You just have to search for it. Exactly. Go find the person. Uh, yeah. Well, Hey Scott, we talked about a lot today. We were able to talk about your role as an ed tech coach. And I think you gave a lot of good feedback and, and ideas for somebody that is thinking about going into that role or somebody that in general, they're, they're a classroom teacher and they just don't know where to start with ed tech. I think there's some, there's some real value in there. Enjoy talking to you about the previous position as a history teacher. How do we support teachers and also the, the cool power of Twitter and how it brought us together, even though we live two minutes apart from yeah. each other. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, we're, know. we're all like, yeah, we're, we're almost to the part of our show where it's the end. So uh, that means it's time for our high fives. These are five questions totally unrelated to education. Just help the viewers get to know you a little better. You ready? All right. Okay. First one, fish sticks or chicken nuggets? Um. Well, I'm going to say neither because I'm a vegan. Okay. <laughs> so, are there any vegan alternatives to that? Um, there are, but they usually taste, uh, like garbage. Okay. Um, so I, I'll probably clarify that and say fish sticks because, uh, I, I guess to be even more true, I do eat fish, um, every now and then. And, you know, the scrimp shack is a favorite. Well, that's just what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So to, I guess, walk everything back, I'm going to go fish sticks. Okay. Fish sticks. <laughs> uh, second one. I think I know the answer to this already. Uh, running or biking? Um, running. Yeah. However, I'm training for a triathlon, so it'll be you know swimming, biking, and running now. <laughs> That's cruising for a bruising, man. So when is the triathlon? Um, it's going to be in late August. So okay. I'm getting a huge start because yeah, I haven't really swam any distance whatsoever in about 20 <laughs> years. So <laughs> get ready. Uh, third one, you know, Scott, you and I were filming today and we got, we got a ton of snow and it's looking like, you know, we were out today looking like we might be out tomorrow. What's your favorite thing to do in the snow? Um, let's see. Drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> or sled. I, what's that? Or sled. Or sled. <laughs> I like throwing snowballs, but, um, you know, LB gets upset if I, if I get her too well, whenever we're, uh, on, or whenever we're shoveling out our cars. Four favorite music genre. Oh, um, I guess the jam band genre. I love Government Mule, Fish, um, mm -hmm. Leftover Salmon. So, yeah, anything like that. And then fifth question: flavored water, yay or nay? Um, usually no. Every once in a while, you got to have a little, you know, little something something in it. But uh, yeah, I'm a big just 
plain water, straight out of the tap guy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tap water fan too. Whenever they have that like off grape or off lemon flavor, eh, no thanks. It's, yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, Scott, loved having you on today. You know, it, it's always great whenever a friend can be on the show. And uh, so before we sign off, is there any final tidbits of wisdom that you have for anybody watching this show? Um, it, I think follow your passion. Um, you know, it, I, I always go back to, you know, some words that Hamish Brewer always says, you know, if you can look in the mirror every day and know that what you've done has been better for kids and you know, made things better for kids, um, then you've had a successful day. That's good wisdom. Well, hey, again, Scott, great having you on. If you are somebody watching this show right now and you want to connect with Scott, you can find his Twitter handle in the description of the video below. Also be sure Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time to check out FCPS Learn. It's an awesome chat. I really enjoy being a part of it. Uh, if you enjoy what you've seen today and, and you're thinking, wow, I'd love to see more Educations, I hope you'll click subscribe below the video. And if you were a friend or interested in being on Educations, you can very easily sign up by going to philstrunk.com slash contact. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.